everyone. Good evening. It's Tracy coming to you live from New Hampshire Dog Walking Club headquarters. And I am here with Christine Thurston of You and Your Dog Training and Services in New Boston, New Hampshire. How are you, Christine? I'm good. How are you? Good. I hope you're not too soggy over on your part of the state. No, it hasn't been too bad here. Thankfully, we just had a couple of passing storms. It sounds like over near Manchester got it a little bit worse. So, okay, well, hopefully it's passed through here because I had to shut my window because it was so loud. I'm like nobody's going to be able to hear us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Nope. It's sunshine here. So we should be good. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I am prefacing this live pop up talk with the fact that if we do get thunder or we do get lightning, obviously we might have to curtail this, but hopefully, knock on my glass table here. <laughs> That it has gone by and we'll be all set. Okay. So guys, I have been really excited to bring Christine to you tonight because I know that we have kind of been prepping you guys with all the fun things that we're doing this month in regards to water and hiking preparedness, which is a whole nother topic that Christine and I can touch upon here at the end as we talk about the, the official club walk that's coming up at the end of the month. But tonight we're going to be going over with you intro to paddling sports. Now, I know we're specifically talking about stand-up paddle boarding tonight, but Christine, will you be touching upon like kayaking or canoeing at all with dogs as well? Yeah, so a lot of the things um, that I'm going to talk about are like you can do whether it's paddle boarding or a kayak or a canoe or whatever it might be. So I have a paddle board. Um, I found that that was the easiest thing for me um, because personally, canoes are not my favorite. I always <laughs> end up in the water when I'm on a canoe, so yeah. so I tend to not do that. Um, but yeah, so a lot of the stuff that I'm going over is for any type of watercraft or paddling thing. Um, so you can do a lot of different things with it. Okay, perfect. Well, let's tell people exactly what they're going to learn about tonight. So Christine is going to be talking about how to prepare your dog for being on the water, dry land training for positive exposure to the watercraft, training cues that will help you while you are out paddling, and how to stay safe and prevent accidents and injuries. So all great points, and I'm anxious to jump into it with you, Christine. But before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and you and your dog training and services? Sure. This is always the hardest part for me is like the fun intro. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> so obviously I'm Christine. Um, I actually, you know, got into dog training about six years ago when we adopted our first dog, Layla. Um, she, you know, was a little bit fearful at first and, you know, thankfully I was able to find Ashley. Um, so I've known her for at least, well, for six years at this point. Um, and we worked with her through a lot of different things and she's turned out to be a lovely dog. Um, she's very easy to get along with. She likes to participate and try a lot of things, which was a huge thing for me. Um, and so when I got into dog training or, you know, I was pursuing that as more of my full-time uh, career, uh, Ashley was like, hey, come work for me. And I was like, of course, of course, I would love to because we get along very well. So, um, so that's kind of how I got into that. Um, I'm a CPDTKA, so um, certified through um, the Certification Council for Professional Dog Trainers, and also if you're free, certified professional as well. Um, and that's really kind of what I enjoy doing the best is, you know, working on ways to, you know, cooperate with your dog and make things more of a, like a fun activity for the two of you and not just like doing stuff to your dog. <laughs> like we want to do it with your dog, which is hence why you and your dog training um, has really come about in terms of, you know, making that strong bond and communication between the handler and their dog. So. And now I know you have lots of great information to share with us, but really the star of the show is, <laughs> is hanging right beside you there, isn't she? she? Is. Yes, actually. Hold on one second. See if we can see her. <laughs> That's the girl. So she's right there. Oh, we there she is. Layla. Yes, you were Hey, Leela. She's like, she's not ready to go. She's like, mom, where's the water? Let's go already. <laughs> I know. I know. She, she loves paddle boarding. So this is like one of her favorite things. When I got it down, she was looking at me like, where are we going? <laughs> so, well, how long has she been paddling with you? Um, We started paddling, I think about four years ago. Um, it's kind of funny because one of the, well, one of the reasons I got into paddle boarding because I saw somebody doing it and I was like, oh, they had their dog with them. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So um, when I started, I, she was actually going through heartworm treatment. Um, so I don't, I didn't talk about that at all, but 
um, about six months after we got her, she was heartworm positive. And so I really struggled with finding things to do with her that would keep her quiet and not running. Mm -hmm. And so I happened to be out on the paddleboard and my husband was out there watching with her and she just like was whining and crying. She's like, where's mom going? And so he's like, why don't you come here? And so I came into shore and she just jumped right on the paddleboard. Oh. <laughs> so we went off together. So a lot of our first uh, pictures, she has those funny little like shave marks on her back from when she had to get those injections. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so she is the anomaly though. Like I don't, I, in my experience, I don't see many dogs that will just be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to jump on this and we're good to go. Um, so some, for some dogs, it does take a little bit of prepping, uh, which is why we got into this, but she, she's one of those dogs that'll just be like, oh, you want me to stand on my head? Sure. I'll do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. Well, and I have a feeling a question on most people's minds. I know it is on my mind because my dogs don't tend to like the water. Yeah. Not like they're scared of it, but you know, they have preferences. So I'm wondering, yeah. can you have a dog be interested in a paddling sport who doesn't yeah. really show that they're interested in the water? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So actually Layla is a, the is that example. Um she's not a big swimmer. She doesn't really care about fetch. Um it's more for her, I think, about participating with me. Um, we have a very close bond. Um, she, again, she's my little heart dog, but don't tell Angus that he'll be very sad. Um, <laughs> she does. She likes to just try a bunch of things and it's like, Oh, if mom's doing it, I'll do it too. Um, so she's definitely that type of dog where she's not a huge water dog. Um, she prefers to just drink the water and she'll like run through it a little bit, but that's about it. So, so yes, you definitely can still do a lot of this stuff because if, again, if your dog likes being with you and likes hanging out with you, like as long as you make it safe and just prepare them for when you inevitably will capsize, that's the biggest part. So, well, that's good to know because I know my husband's watching and I was telling him, I'm like, boy, it would be really cool if we get, get Gilly on a stand-up paddleboard, she's five. She doesn't prefer yeah. the water. It's not like she's afraid of it. But yep. we did just get a stand-up paddleboard from my brother because he moved out of New Hampshire. And I'm like, okay, well, it'd be very cool to learn how to use it, but would it, it would be even cooler if Gilly would try it out with us. Yeah. So, all right. So it sounds like what you're telling me is there is hope. Yes, there is okay. definitely hope. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, how do we, why don't we start, Christine, with you telling us how do you prepare your dog for being on water? What are the first steps? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is, well, again, to kind of think about like, how does your dog feel about the water? <laughs> so dogs that really hate it, like, you know, they do everything they can to avoid it. Like, you know, you'll either have to take a longer time or maybe it's not the right thing for you guys. Um, it's not to say that like you shouldn't try. I mean, I still like I would still try a lot of different things um, to see if it's something that they could eventually end up liking. But the biggest thing is to start on dry land. <laughs> like yep. we did it kind of the wrong way um, in the sense that she just happened to jump on and she was good to go. She just laid down and was like, okay, I'm ready to take my paddle. But the biggest thing you can do is start on dry land. So making sure that like you're introducing them to a paddleboard or a kayak or canoe when it's stable and not on the water. Because if you think about it, if their first interaction with it, with these things is, you know, we go out and then it flips over and I end up in the water, which I don't necessarily like, your dog's probably not going to want to go on there again. So <laughs> you to take it slow and start on dry land first. So... Well, then this gives me an opportunity to tell people a little bit about our doggy social coming up with you on the uh, 26th, I think it is, right? I think that's Saturday Yep. at 6 p.m. Just looking up our calendar here. So let's see. June. Yep. Saturday, June 26th at 6 p.m. We're going to be at Friendly Pets Dog Park in Lee, where we hold our doggy socials. And Christine is going to be there and she's going to have a setup similar to what she's explaining tonight so that you can come and try your dog through this intro transition to see if they're interested and christine after we go through this with the doggy social will you be able to tell people attending if their dog might be ready for that next step oh uh, i think so yeah i okay. think i feel pretty confident in being able to tell okay. um so yeah i can definitely help people or like you know help them figure out like what next steps might be um i i may bring my paddleboard that's a good idea i never i didn't think about bringing that i will bring some okay. other things but i might bring it and let people try it um and that i can bring mine too if you want 
Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah that'd be awesome. Um, I do have, I think I have a kayak too. So it might have okay. spiders in it. So I'll make sure to rinse it out. <laughs> but, but yeah, we could definitely do that. All right, cool. So kind of paint this picture for us here. What, how does it work with the boogie boards and, and the setup initially? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so actually, do you want me to kind of start like in the beginning? I've got my little PowerPoint thing. Yeah, do you want to show that? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let me okay. go ahead. Do, do, do. Sorry, guys, this is my first time using uh, StreamYard. Not so. at all. But if you guys have any questions while Christine's getting set up, let us know. Uh, we're happy to interject them as we go here. And if you have any questions about the doggy social that's coming up as well, I know we do still have a little bit of space left. We only take uh, 13 dogs. So if it is something you're interested in, you're going to want to find it on the event calendar and get signed up. Perfect. All right. I'm seeing it on the screen, Christine. Excellent. Okay. Fabulous. So the paddling pups. <laughs> so this is actually my husband and, and Miss Layla. She decided to transfer from the paddleboard onto the kayak. So that was kind of a funny picture that I just took of her. All right. So again, before you guys kind of get on the water, big thing is, does your dog like the water, which we kind of already talked about. But then another factor that some people don't think about is, can your dog swim? <laughs> so contrary to popular belief, not all dogs are built to swim. <laughs> so if you think about breeds that tend to be really heavy um, in the chest and, you know, they have little tiny bums like uh, a lot of the bulldogs, um, like Boston Terriers, uh, French Bulldogs, those types of dogs, they can actually have a really hard time swimming just because they're so top heavy. Oh, wow. um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, so I always recommend teaching your dog to love a life jacket because you never know. <laughs> um, yeah. Layla can swim. She's not great at it. Um, so again, I like having the life jacket on like for, you know, that emergency scenario. So just in case we happen to take a spill into the water, like I know that she's not going to, you know, sink to the bottom. Um, the other thing to think about too, is what your paddling experience is and what your skill set is. Because I will say it is a lot harder when you have another being on there, especially if they like to move around a bit. So making sure that you're comfortable enough that like, you know, say you're on your paddleboard and your dog decides like, oh, I'm going to run to the front of the board that could potentially throw off your balance. Like, say, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Same thing if you're in a canoe or a kayak. Um, you know, if you have a dog that's wiggly, they like, they get excited or like if they see other people, um, that's something that you want to make sure that you're comfortable with because otherwise you'll very, very quickly be in the water. <laughs> so, all right. So one thing I wanted to talk about was choosing a life jacket. There are so many different ones out there. Um, my things that I'm looking for are ones that don't limit the dog's movement so that if they do get in the water, they can still swim fine. Like there's no issue with, you know, any of that movement for them. Um, easy to grab handles so that when your dog does go off, because it will happen, that you can easily reach down and pick them up. Um, this orange one in the bottom left corner is the one that actually Layla has, um, which I love because it has the two handles on it. It's bright orange, so it, she's hard to miss. So if she ends up in the water, like it's not like she's going to get, you know, hit by anything or something like that. Um, and it also has this little flap underneath her chin. So I guess to help keep their head above water too. <laughs> so that works out very nicely. Where'd you get that one, Christine? That really does look like a good setup. Um, that one I think I got, I think at Petco. I am, that one's Ooh. by Outward Hound, um, which I really, I like it. It's pretty good. It doesn't have like quite as much in the way of like flexibility and adjustment um, in the front section. So if you have a dog that has a shorter chest, I might go for one of the other ones. But I do like that one a lot. It works really well for her. Yeah, I like the two handle idea for sure. Yes, definitely. Um, the dog that is wearing the goggles, um, that one is, I think, Herta. So I believe it's H-U-R-R-T-A is the brand, uh, which is another great option. It's got that one handle that actually goes, like runs down the back of the dog, which can sometimes be helpful because if they're swimming up alongside you, the handle's a little bit easier to grab that way. Mm -hmm. um, kind of similar to this rough wear one that's down in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. So 
obviously making sure you have the correct size because heavier dogs are going to need a bit more buoyancy. Um, similarly, if you've got like a Frenchie or a bulldog of any type that has those really heavy um, like front half, <laughs> um, having something that has enough buoyancy in the front to kind of keep their head up out of the water is a really great idea. Um, so in terms of like how to introduce the life jacket, so a lot of times people will, you know, just take the life jacket and just throw it on their dog and be like, there you go. You're used to your life jacket. <laughs> but I actually like to take things a little bit slower where I really start on pairing the life jacket with lots of great rewards so that they end up looking at the life jacket and being like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Like they love wearing it. Um, it's very similar. Like it's the same process for if you're introducing a harness or muzzles or like eye goggles, eyewear, anything like that. Um, you want to make sure that they enjoy wearing these things. Um, because again, if you have a dog that you just pop it on and they're kind of like just standing there, you'll see them where they just stand and they don't move. <laughs> they're like, this is not enjoyable for me at all. That kind of like sets the tone for your outing, you know, and you want them to, to be having a good time like you are too. And Christina, just wanted to ask our audience real quick. So if you're listening live or if you're watching on the replay, I would love to know if you have tried introducing your dog to uh, paddling sports as of yet, and then one, was it successful, or two, did you have problems, and what were your problems? Yeah. I'd love to just have a bigger discussion around this. So if you don't mind sharing, if you've never introduced it and you're watching because you're simply interested, that's perfectly fine. Let us know that, too, just so we have a sense of, uh, you know, what your – your um, level of interest and you know uh how you've tried this in the past just yes yeah, just so we know yeah that would be awesome then yeah we perfect retail this to you great awesome so like i said when you're going to introduce your watercraft whether it's a paddleboard a canoe a kayak anything like that i start on dry land first um because you want to make sure that it's easy um it's stable like they're not going to just jump on and immediately fall off um so again, actually, I've got Miss Layla here. So actually, maybe I'll go through this first and then I'll show you guys. Maybe that's easier. Okay. Um, so again, I'm starting with really stable. So basically just on the ground, you know, you can use things like yoga blocks to make it more stable or less stable. Um, with the paddle boards, they tend to be pretty flat on the bottom. Um, so just putting it on the ground is usually perfect. Um, some types of other boats or canoes may, well, actually canoes have a pretty flat bottom as well, but I know some types of kayaks like have more of um, an angled bottom. So that might be a little bit harder. So you can use yoga blocks or anything to kind of stabilize the sides of it so that it's not immediately going to like wobble when the dog gets on. Um, once they're comfortable with that though, you can also use these things to make it a little bit more wobbly to kind of more mimic what it would be like on the water. Um, so either putting it, you know, on some yoga blocks or on some type of a, uh, wobble board. Usually what I do is I take like a big piece of, um, like plywood and put like another board or a rock or something underneath it, depending on the size of the rock. <laughs> and that's a good way to kind of make it a little bit more wobbly too. Um, low pressure, positive exposure. So please don't drag your dog on there. Um, the biggest thing again is like making sure that it's a fun experience for them. And so like you're using lots of rewards, lots of, like whether it's food or your dog's favorite ball or toys um, so that they're like, oh my God, this thing, this watercraft, <laughs> whatever it is, um, comes with all this really great stuff. Um, I don't know, I'll show you Miss Layla after, um, cause she is just very nicely sitting on the front of the <laughs> Waiting patiently. <laughs> She's just waiting for more treats. <laughs> um, and I put down in here shaping versus luring. So for people who aren't as familiar with um, training, different training techniques, shaping involves like letting your dog kind of figure out what you're asking of them. So you're not helping them. You're kind of just waiting to see what they're going to offer you and you can reward certain behaviors. So if I'm thinking, I think of it as like taking steps towards a goal. So an example would be if I'm introducing a paddleboard, I would just wait for my dog to kind of sniff it and then I would mark and reward that. And maybe I would mark and reward when they put a paw on it or if they jump on it or something like that. So I'm really letting the dog kind of figure it out. And so they're exploring and 
figuring out what I want on their own versus luring, which is where I take a piece of food or a toy or something and I physically move it in a way that gets the dog to jump onto something or to get into a certain position. So I personally like to use shaping when I'm introducing new stuff like this because I want to make sure that my dog is comfortable and moving at their own pace. Um, sometimes what happens with luring is the dog will like try something because they really, really, really want the piece of food. But if you look at their body language, like they're really not comfortable with it and they're not enjoying it. Um, and especially with something like this, where, you know, you're going to be out for longer periods of time, you know, I really want to make sure that they're having having fun and enjoying the experience and not like, oh my God, I'm on this thing and I really don't want to be here, you know? Yeah, that's a great explanation. I like the uh, the difference between the two. I think it is important to really focus on shaping and making sure it's a really positive experience for them. Good point. Yeah, absolutely. And if people have more questions about it, like feel free to email me or, you know, reach out um, on the community website or the community group as well. And I'm happy to send you some resources or talk to you a little bit more about it too. So, because it is a okay. really a fun game to play with your dog too. So I enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. And guys, we have uh, storms moving through again, and I don't know if I'm having an internet problem. So if I lose you or if our voices aren't coming through clear or anything, um, can you just send me a comment so that I know, but hopefully fingers crossed it holds here until the end. Yes. Oh, I hope so. All so right. So Christine, we've got some great comments. Can I flash them up? Yeah, please. All right. Let me just, I'm going to take your presentation out for just a minute so you can see yeah. these two. So let's see. I'm going to come back. We've got, uh, so my husband is saying that Gilly is actually a scaredy cat and doesn't like water. Okay. That's, that wasn't my interpretation, but he knows better. So oh, unfortunately, okay. it might not work for her. Well, you'll have to bring it, bring Gilly to the. Yes, we should. I want to see. Right out yeah. there. <laughs> so Nancy says, I'd like to try it. So she's awesome. got um, uh, an older puppy named Lucy. I think Lucy would enjoy it too. She's got a lot of energy and she does seem to enjoy the water. So I think that'd be fun nice. to try for Lucy. And let's see, uh, this person says, uh, Sammy kayaks and he's great staying in the boat and falls asleep ah, <laughs> and does well with his life jacket. My interest is the safety part if something happens in the water. Perfect. Yeah. And I know, Christine, you're going to be covering that towards the end, yes. right? In more detail. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. Great. This person says, I've started my dog swimming and she is doing great. I have put my kayak on the ground and I'm letting her get used to seeing it. Okay, so that sounds like great first step. Yeah, no, that's nice great. Yep. Absolutely. And let's see, I wish Sammy swimmed, Kristen, but he doesn't like going in for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Kristen, Kristen do you have like um, magic dust you might be able to put over some of these dogs? And <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't, I'll, I'm all out of magic dust, but... Oh. But I can say, like I said before, I mean, Layla is not a big water dog. So it's very possible that, you know, by introducing some of these things and just trying it out, like your dog yeah. might end up loving it and it might be okay. a really good thing for them to do. Yeah. All so, right, so hold out hope, it. everyone. Yeah. Like yeah. I am for Gilly. Yes, absolutely. This person says, uh, canoeing, Echo wasn't thrilled. If we passed a floating platform, he tried oh, to get yeah. out. Yeah. He's fine with a life jacket. I just popped it on him. He barks at other dogs on shore, too. <laughs> gotcha. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. something that I'll talk about, too, is just, like, in terms of the training aspect, like, that can be, make like, really make or break the experience for both of you. So Okay, okay, absolutely. good. Awesome. And so then Ray said about our our older dog who's now 12 uh, but as a younger dog she used to go kayaking with us and I remember that she actually used to sit in the kayak granted the introduction was not a quality introduction like what you're explaining here today but she seemed to like it she didn't try to jump out so okay. maybe if we do it the right way there's hope for Gilly yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah and trust me it's never too late and especially if like you want to try a different type of watercraft like there's no reason that you can't so um and actually i did want to mention one other thing that i didn't say before was when you're thinking about so say you're like i really want to go do something on the water with my dog but you haven't really decided what it is keep in mind that the size of your dog <laughs> will make a difference so uh, Layla is about 45 pounds. So for her paddling like in a, in a kayak was not the most comfortable thing for either of us just because of the size of her, the size of me, the size of the opening. It didn't really work. So that was part of the reason why I went with a paddleboard versus something else. Okay. Um, and like I said before, canoes are not my friend. I always end up in the water. So I knew that that wasn't going to be a good one for us. Um, but luckily, like there's so many different types of like 
boats and kayaks and all kinds of stuff out there now that, you know, if you really want to do it, feel like there's ways to do it. So. Okay, good. So there is hope. Great. Awesome. Awesome. So right, you want to um, back into the presentation or? Yeah, absolutely. So actually I wanted to just show you guys quick. So what Layla, so obviously this is my paddleboard. Layla is on the front. <laughs> so when I first started this with her, um, with this new board, um, this is what I did. I just had it out on the ground. You know, she actually immediately jumped on it, but say she didn't, what I could do is get you off yeah See, she doesn't like to get off because no she, she wants to stay on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so say like she gets on top and i can mark and reward that and if she gets on more maybe yeah what do you think ta that a girl <laughs> and so like she's just kind of exploring and just checking it out i could just litter treats all over it and just let her kind of find the things and obviously, like as she moves towards the front, it gets a little bit more unstable. So there's options for that as well, just getting them used to moving around on it. There you go. Good job. Christine, how do you find they do with that slippy, slippery texture as well? Or is it not that slippery when it's got water on it? Oh, it's very slippery. It so slippery. I have a trick. <laughs> okay. I made this very expensive thing <laughs> out of a yoga mat. <laughs> So, oh, good idea. Yeah. So what I do is I just put it on the front because otherwise it is very slippery. And so it's not pretty, but it's very functional. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good girl. Thank you. So it fits right over there. So and I actually cut slits in it so that when I put um, I can put it underneath the bungee cord here. So that helps keep it on, and then I can still, you know, put stuff under there if I need to. That's perfect. Yes. You know, but you I might have to custom make those and sell those now that you've introduced what? it to us. <laughs> <laughs> I would if they looked nicer, but I really, I just use like an old yoga mat and some Gorilla Glue. And I That's such a great idea, though. Together. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it works really nicely. And then it also helps protect the board, too, because I splurged a little bit on it. So I wanted to keep it nice. Um, so that helps from keeping it get scratched up, too. So. But, so, um, Christine, are there any special shoes that they might need, though, too? Or is it just really that yoga mat is probably the best thing? Um, I don't find that shoes that they really need that, um, especially because if your dog happens to fall in the water, I worry about how shoes might affect their swimming abilities. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I typically don't, but I just, I love using yoga mats because, again, if you put it at the bottom, hey, honey, there's a treat fell in the middle of the... Okay. Here. Um, so I find that if you lay out like a, um, a yoga mat at the bottom of a canoe or something like that, that really helps make it less slippery. And that too can help them be a little bit more comfortable with it too. That's so great. I'm not worried about that. So. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, but that's a good question. So nope, you don't need any special shoes. Okay, unless you want to really protect your stuff. But again, the yoga mats are awesome for that. Yeah, sounds like it. Cool. All right. So I'll go back here. Do, do, do. Play. Okay. All right. So when we think about- I don't about have it back in the stream yet if you're looking at your presentation. Oh, I'm not. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Again, newbie with- uh, That's all right. Take here. your time. Perfect. Yeah. Let us know, guys, if you have any other questions too, as, as we're going through here. Christine's introducing a lot of great ideas and strategies cost effective, I might add. So it's yeah. very helpful. <laughs> I try, I try. But yeah, please ask questions if you have them. All right. So in terms of like going off of more dry land training, um, thinking about some of the cues that you might need for when you're on your watercraft. So I find um, that having an on and an off or a get in and get out um, is really helpful because um, sometimes, you know, like say you're in a kayak and you're trying to get out deeper so that you don't immediately sink when the dog, or uh, not sink, but strand yourself. Um, having a cue for that is really helpful. The other things are thinking about sit, down, stand on the watercraft can be really helpful as well because sometimes you might need them to be sitting, sometimes you might need them to stand. 
So really practicing and drilling those cues can be really helpful for them and for you and make your paddling experience a little bit better. Um, the other one that you can kind of use to substitute this is a hand target. So what that is, is where you hold out your flat hand and your dog comes and bops your hand with their nose or you could teach their shoulder, whatever it is. Um, I love hand targets because if Layla is too far back, I can say touch and hold out my hand and I can help position her in a spot that I need her to be in. Hmm. So that is really helpful. And then the last one is through, which is where your dog comes and sits right in between your feet. So they're, you're both facing the same direction, especially when you're paddle boarding. It's really nice to have your dog just basically right underneath you. That helps keep everything a little bit stable, uh, more stable, um, so that they're not, you know, walking around if like this is like only your third or fourth time paddling and they're walking around and trying to throw you off. So, um, so that's a really helpful cue to have as well. Oh, great idea. Awesome. And we will talk more about this too, and we'll do more demos and stuff um, at the um, the event that Doggy we're going to do. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Yep. Perfect. June 26, 6 p.m. Let us know if you join us. Yes. And so this actually works in perfectly because some of the things that we're going to be doing at the Doggy Social are these pool activities. So when I worked uh, with Angus, especially what I'm doing is getting him used to like getting his face in the water. Um, so we do a lot of bobbing for hot dogs where I have a nice little um, kiddie pool and I fill it up with like maybe an inch of, or half an inch of water and I drop some high value treats in it so that he has to stick his nose in the water in order to get it. And so yeah. what that does is it helps practice like holding their breath, putting their face in the water. Um, because if your dogs are like mine, they hate it when their faces get wet. Um, so this again is like a really low pressure, fun way for them to kind of practice that and get used to that feeling. And then the nice part is it doubles as a scent work game. Um, dogs can actually smell things that are underwater. So, um, which I didn't know until I, until I found out about this game. So I thought that was very cool. I like that bobbing for hot dogs. Oh my yeah. goodness. That <laughs> yeah, sounds like so much fun. <laughs> I know. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, one of the things we'll be doing. So that'll be Perfect. kind of fun to see if your dogs will enjoy bobbing for hot dogs. Um, and then the other game we'll be playing is with a pool, at least, is a, with a boogie board. So what this does is I'll just, you know, at first I put the boogie board in the pool with no water at all. So just having the dog get in, put their feet on, you know, just kind of explore that. And, you know, obviously rewarding them, you know, making sure that it's really fun for them as well. Then what you can start to do is add like an inch of water, maybe a couple inches of water, like as they get better at it, so that it is more like, you know, when you're out on the water and they have to balance and, you know, get used to that kind of feeling. So again, it's like a really fun, easy way to kind of build some confidence, um, get them used to the the balancing aspect, because I think that is where usually dogs will panic um, when they're on unstable surfaces. Uh, a lot of times you'll see them like they hunker down or they scramble to jump off. And so before you get on the water, you want to make sure that they're really comfortable with those unstable surfaces first, because otherwise, if you just throw them in the canoe or throw them on your paddleboard, I would say eight times out of 10, they're probably going to be like, oh, my God, and try to try to bail. So yeah. um, but I should say, too, that if your dog like if you're playing with the boogie board or you're doing something dry land training wise, if they want to bail, let them like it's fine. You know, you don't have to force them to do it. Um, actually, forcing them is a good way to make it more scary. <laughs> so just let them get off like and then just try to help them, you know, come back on. That's all. Um, so just take it really easy, nice and slow. It's different if you're on the water. So you don't necessarily want them to bail and then you're going to be chasing your dog. But um, but we'll talk about that for sure. So did any questions come up about that? Well, Nancy's got a question here. She asks, do you practice having the dog jump in so they would be used to it in case something happens? And yeah. I'm thinking, I remember when I was in Girl Scouts, we were learning yeah. how to canoe and they would specifically have us roll them yes. so that we would understand what happens and how to react if it ever happened. Yep. Yeah, that's actually on the last slide that I'm going to show. So. Oh, okay. okay. 
Absolutely. All right, Nancy, hold tight, it's coming. Yes, I will get there, <laughs> not to worry. Um, so I just wanted to show a quick video. I did post it in the group, so I apologize if you guys are seeing this multiple times, um, but this is just a short demo of the boogie board game. Awesome. Huh? So there's only about maybe an inch of water in there. So when he gets on, it it touches the bottom so that it's not gonna like go flying out from underneath them. Okay. And I'm sure you probably can't hear the chickens, but my chickens were very upset. Oh no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had that little thing on the bottom because I can hear them here. <laughs> but I'm just rewarding him for putting his feet on right now. And then this is like the bobbing for treats. So there's treats at the bottom that he sticks his face in to grab. Good job. I need like one of those selfie sticks so you can see from farther away. Right. <laughs> so on this one, I actually put my foot on part of the board oh, to just hold it down a little bit more oh, so boy. that he would get on it a little bit more. Okay. So when you guys come to the doggy social, make sure you bring stuff you don't care about getting wet. <laughs> Just <in case. laughs> awesome. Yes. He's a very good boy. He tries lots of things. Very right. cool. Yeah. Thank you. Oops. Okay. So in terms of safety, this is kind of counterintuitive, but I do not recommend having a leash on your dog if you're on the water. <laughs> because if your dog jumps off or falls in the leash could get wrapped around them and could potentially be a drowning hazard. Mm -hmm. So I really, I see a lot of pictures out there because again, like, you know, we think like, oh, my dog should be on leash in case they jump off so I can grab it. But I, that makes me very nervous. So I try to make sure that when I'm doing training and prepping with my dog, like they have a really good, like they have a good recall. They're probably not going to jump off at every dog or, you know, person that they see. Um, because again, like I am thinking more of just like if they were to get caught or the leash sank and like got caught on something. Um, I had a client who was telling me that that ha actually happened to her dog. They were swimming somewhere and it got tangled in some, uh, logs that she didn't see underneath the water. Um, and so she had to jump in to save her dog. Um, so leashes and water usually don't mix. So be very, very careful. Um, if you are planning to have a leash, if you think your dog's going to jump off or like, you know, try to get out um, unexpectedly, um, then I would probably pause and like just reevaluate and make sure that like they are actually enjoying the experience too. Because that's kind of one of the, the red flags for me is like if my dog's constantly trying to get out, like to get to dry land or to get to something stable, then I'm like, okay, maybe we need to practice more and just get them more comfortable like in shallow water first um, before we kind of go out on a longer paddle. Um, so then obviously practicing swimming, make sure that you have pretty good swimming skills in case you do fall in, um, because it will happen. Uh, even if you're a great paddler, it doesn't matter. Um, I always like to plan for the worst. And I like to practice with my dog swimming as well. So Layla, like I said, she doesn't really like the water, but oh, it's like sometimes we'll go and we'll practice swimming, like just going out a little bit, coming back in, going out again, um, just so that she gets practice with it. Because again, I don't want my dog to fall in the water and then panic. Um, and because that's when, you know, bad things happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So again, like evaluating your own paddling skills, like, are you ready for having another being <laughs> who has a mind of their own? Um, and then evaluating your dog skills too. So like, will they, like, can they do a sit on the board? Will they um, stay? Will they come back to you if you call them, if they fall in? Um, things like that. But I definitely make sure to practice that oh no moment or the oh crap moment <laughs> where when you do fall in, um, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. Because again, like I hate doing it to Layla, but I have a, I have a cue for it actually. Um, I say party and we jump in. <laughs> so 
<laughs> so she knows the cue now. So like if I fall off, like I'll say party or sometimes like I do say like, oh, no, um, so that she knows kind of what to expect. And so okay. that it's not like a huge surprise. Yep. Um, so I do practice jumping on, jumping off, um, all of those things so that, you know, if something happens, then I have a way to kind of you know, help her through that. Um, the number one thing is to always make sure that you get yourself to safety first. Um, I know our reaction is usually to try to help our dogs, but keep in mind, if you drown, nobody's there to help your dog. So you have to take care of yourself first, get yourself either to a safe place, or if you can flip your canoe back over your kayak, your paddleboard, whatever it might be, get on there first and then worry about your dog. Um, because again, that's, you're not going to be any help to them if you're not there. So you have to that's do that. Point. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it is scary. Um, the very first time that I did this with Layla, um, <laughs> I cued her off. We jumped in and she tried to climb on me. So oh, really? when you're practicing this, yes, I had some epic scratches. Yes. <laughs> so when you're practicing this, I suggest practicing in shallow water first so that you can touch the bottom um, and gradually work your way out to deeper sections. Because again, that moment of panic absolutely sets in, like whether you're prepared or not you know, preparing is going to make it a little bit less so, but you want to make sure that like the first time you fall in is not when you're, you know, a hundred feet offshore in 50 feet of water. Um, you want to make sure that you're really comfortable and practicing in those shallow, um, shallow depths first, um, just to keep with that awesome practice. So that's a big one. Very All nice. right. Thank you. Yes. And there she is. My little paddling oh. pup. <laughs> She's got a big smile on her face. She does. She loves this. She is. She's so funny. She's like anywhere you go, I want to go too. So she's great. But awesome. Well, we had one last question. I'm pretty sure you already answered this, but could you do this on the edge of a lake with a sandy beach? And I think your yeah. answer is yes, right? Yep, absolutely. That's where I recommend starting. Because um, again, once you go from dry land, that's a great way to kind of make that. Um, to bridge that gap so from going like straight to the water. So that's a really good one. Um, and the thing too, so if you're doing any type of paddling sport, like like I said, you need to know your skills too. And you need to make sure that, you know, you know how, like I don't know how to flip a canoe over if it tips in the middle of the lake. <laughs> like I have no idea how to do that. Right. So it's perfect that you learned how to do that. Oh, that was like, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, but it's good to practice. And like, again, like if your canoe, if your kayak flips over, yeah, like that's personally why I chose a paddleboard because if it flips over, like it's not underwater, <laughs> it still floats. So we're good. Right. Um, but obviously making sure that you have a life jacket, I believe you have to in New Hampshire, you have to have some type of flotation device for yourself. Um, and then again, just making sure you've got lights, um, things like that. Actually, Layla's got a, um, on her collar here. If you're paddling at lower light times, there's a light you can attach to their collar or their, um, I don't know if you can even see it. Um, I think this one's made by Roughwear, and so a lot of the Roughwear stuff has like little um, like clips that you can attach this to. So I believe their life jacket has it also, but it is waterproof, which is awesome. So if you're going out and it's later and the light is lower, I definitely recommend having a light too, because that always scares me on some lakes. People drive very fast with their boats. So, well, but. Christine, would you recommend to staying in shallow water until you really, you and your dog have a really good feel of the sport, or does it make more sense to go a little further out? So if you fall, you're not like necessarily falling and hitting the ground if you're too shallow. Yeah, so it's a fine line. I like to go, like, especially in the beginning, I go about where I can still touch or like, like I, I, I'm a fairly good swimmer. So like, I'm pretty comfortable with that. I always wear a life jacket too. So the chances of drowning are lower yeah. <laughs> because again, I'm always worried about the dog too. But, um, but yeah, starting in shallow, shallow places, like where you can still kind of touch 
because typically like if you're in five feet of water, if you fall off a paddleboard, like you're probably not going to fall onto something like you're not going to just immediately sink five feet. So, um, so I find that that's a pretty good depth. Um, but again, like in all the lakes in New Hampshire, you just have to be careful of like rocks and trees yeah. and all kinds of stuff. So just know where you're going <laughs> and what's around you. Um, I have a couple of spots that I really like to go that the lake, the water is very clear. So you can see like straight down to the bottom, whether it's 10 feet or 50. So, um, so that is really nice. Um, it's actually Lake Nubanusant out in Hancock, New Hampshire. Oh, and I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's, well, now I just ruined it because now I told everybody about it. <laughs> everybody go there now. <laughs> I know, but it's a beautiful lake. There's uh, there's eagles and things like that. And it's a really clean lake, um, which is awesome. So I like going there. Um, but I, I sometimes will go to Babusik as well in Amherst. Um, and then I go, my family lives up near Lake Sunapee. So I go up there a lot too. Ooh, so nice lake as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But like I said, you have to be careful though, because there's a lot of crazy boat drivers out there. So make sure yes, you go there there a little less, a little less busy. So well, Christine, you have really given us a lot of great information. I really, really appreciate this. And we've had some great questions as well. Can you tell us how would people find out a little bit more about you and your company? Yeah, so you can find us at youandyourdogtraining.com. Um, if you want to reach me directly, you can do Christine at youandyourdogtraining.com. Um, it's Christine with a K. Um, or you can do info at, at um, youandyourdogtraining. And yeah, that's the best way. Like we're on Facebook also. Um, so either one of those is a great way to find us. Perfect. And so we've got June 26th, Saturday evening, 6 to 7.30 p.m. at Friendly Pets Dog Park in Lee, New Hampshire, where we're going to do intro to paddling sports. And then that very next morning, yes. right, the 27th, yep. Sunday, 10 a.m., we're going to be at Wasserman Conservation Area talking yeah. about hiking with your dog and how to be prepared for any situation. Do you want yeah. to give just a little bit of a snippet of what we're going to be doing on the official club walk as yeah. well? Yeah, sure. So we're going to be talking about, you know, when you're out, like what some things you should be bringing with you. So I have, depending on the type of hike I'm doing, I've got a couple of different bags. Um, obviously you guys are in my basement. <laughs> you can see the, the backpacks over there. So don't worry. You don't have to bring one that's quite that big. Um, but I will go over like some of the things that I take on like, you know, short walks and things that I take on like longer hikes. Um, the things that I have with me all the time, um, how to handle off leash dogs. Uh, we'll be talking about that because that's a big thing that we've been yeah, running into. Definitely. Um, and just like some basic like trail etiquette, um, make sure that you are especially always picking up after your dog because the the crummy part is that in New Hampshire, you know, there are there are thankfully a lot of places the dogs are allowed to go. Um, but it's at risk because if people are letting their dogs off leash um, in areas that they're not supposed to be or not picking up after their dogs, like that's a good way to make people angry. <laughs> and then unfortunately your dog won't be able to go to a lot of those places. So, so that's a big thing. And just, you know, that's really the biggest topic is just making sure that you're being a responsible dog guardian um, and making sure that, you know, you're, we're keeping these places around for all of us. So. Well, I'm really looking forward to that conversation because it's extremely timely with the dog and the kid that were lost in the White Mountains recently. Yeah. And people yep. had to go up, experienced hikers had to go up and rescue them because fish and game yeah. not rescue injured right. dogs. And they were right. not prepared and they didn't know what they were doing. And yeah. I guess the dog's paws were all shredded. They didn't have a, a pack and paw harness, which we're going yeah. to actually have when we go to Wasserman. And we're giving I know, away I one this month as well, along with the great stuff you guys are offering, which includes a first aid kit. So, yes. yeah, lots of great information that I know you're going to be sharing there. So really appreciate all of this great advice. It's very, very timely. Awesome. Yeah, I know. I, I heard that story, too. And I was like, oh, this will be perfect. So hopefully we will oh. have, have people experiencing that because, yeah, it is. It's really scary. And, you know, I can't possibly be able to cover all of the things, but um, hopefully I'll have some good resources for you guys if you want to find more about like just hiking preparedness in general. Um, I know the state of New Hampshire website, um, the fish and game website, like hike safe, uh, that is all great stuff um, to definitely check out because again, you don't want to make it on the news. 
exactly. <laughs> that's my thing is I try not, I try to avoid the news as much as I can, but Yes. So it's, it's going to be a very informative walk. And also, uh, you know, in conjunction with the educational component that we have at each of our official club walks, if you don't know, if you're new to our club, after attending six official club walks, you do earn an official club t-shirt and that's six in one year. So once you do six official club walks, which we do at least one a month, uh, you will earn your club t-shirt and we have a whole new, really cool design this year. So one last question um, from somebody, Christine, they say, uh, when is the Wasserman Walk? So again, that is Sunday, June 27th at 10 a.m. And that is in Merrimack, New Hampshire. So you've got the intro to paddling sports, doggy social that night. And then that next morning, we're going to be with Christine again on uh, hiking preparedness. Now, is, Ash, is Ashley going to be there as well, I think, on that yeah. one? Yep. Yeah, she'll okay. be there. Actually, she'll be at both of them, I believe. Oh, she is. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so, you get to meet Ashley. She's that's a lot perfect. better than me. <laughs> good, but, good. No, All we're right. so excited. We're really looking forward to it. Um, you know, and hopefully people will enjoy spending like their whole weekend with us. So it'll be great. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I know I'm going to learn a lot. So awesome. yeah. <laughs> well, well, Christine, great. thank you again, and thank you to Layla. We appreciate yeah. her demonstrating the board and the yoga mat. Thanks. Awesome information. Thanks everybody for your questions and for your feedback. And we hope to see you at these upcoming events here at the end of the month. Yeah. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.